Kevin, we were just uh, finding our footing coming out of the uh, pandemic with the news of uh, Russia's war on Ukraine. It's a uh, highlighted global uncertainty, uh, supply chain issues, inflation. Canada has had a leading role in uh, the war on Ukraine with uh, budget 2022 around the corner. As you see it, will defense spending be a main ingredient? I think it has to be, Larissa. And um, I think there's every reason to think it will be. Uh, you've already seen some of the uh, the typical sort of pre-budget murmurs, whispers coming out of Ottawa, uh, talking about the uh, the federal government getting serious about Canada's place in the world. That to me is code for uh, increased budget uh, spending around uh, the military. Um, this is something that people have been asking for 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 a long time. I mean, obviously the the situation in Ukraine has galvanized uh, the thinking in Ottawa. If there was any sort of naivete or or complacency around these ideas left, uh, that's gone now. It's uh, been an opportunity to focus in on some things that uh, that we really needed to be doing for for a long time now. Uh, given the uh, the obvious aggression. Um, that we're seeing out of China. It's, uh, it's sort of posture that is taking toward the world. Uh, now we see what's going on uh, around Russia. Um, the Middle East has become more and more volatile or at least harder to predict. Um, so it's just more, more and more reasons. And I think finally, the, uh, as I said, the, uh, the Russia situation has been uh, the tipping point, the, the, the last straw, I guess you could say, um, in whatever argument that was going on about the need to get Canada's defense spending to uh, an appropriate level. And I'm sure the target will be that sort of 2% of GDP commitment that, uh, that we've uh, failed to meet uh, for a long time uh, in regards to NATO. But I'm pretty sure the government will, uh, will take us there in the budget this week. Let's uh, talk about some of the uh, other ingredients expected to uh, make uh, budget 2022. Inflation, of course, also uh, top of mind. Canada's economy saw a, a fairly solid Q1, but of course, with all those numbers pushing up higher, how will the government address inflation? Well, I hope the government will address inflation by taking itself out of the, uh, out of the economy, at least somewhat. And what I mean by that is, uh, by pulling itself out of the economy in terms of stimulus, all the stimulus that is provided to uh, to get the economy through the uh, recession uh, related to the pandemic, um, all those things were necessary. Uh, the government uh, erred on the side of growth, erred on the side of overshooting what might be necessary rather than holding back and uh, risking some people being left behind. Uh, people have different ideas about uh, about that approach. I think it's hard to argue, given the circumstances, given the the unprecedented nat nature of uh, the pandemic and and everything that's gone on around there, that it was a mistake to overdo it. However, um, I think we've reached a stage where we can see, given the inflation backdrop, that uh, that the federal government should be feeling some pressure to pull back that sort of uh, discretionary stimulus. Um, about as quickly as it uh, as it uh, initiated it back in the the early phases of the of the pandemic, so I think that would be a good start. Um, and then I'm sure there's some other things that the the federal government sh uh, is thinking about and could do to alleviate the uh, the, the situation. One, for example, uh, you know, there could be uh, could be some measures in in the pipeline, perhaps to to ensure that Canadians sort of leave some of that money that they've that they've built up during the pandemic in the bank. That'll take it out of the economy and take some of the, the demand pressure off the inflationary situation. Something else the government uh, hopefully is also thinking about are various measures to improve the, the country's uh, productivity, its competitiveness. Measures along those lines would go a long way to uh, increasing the capacity in the economy, and that too would uh, alleviate some of the inflationary pressures. That's longer term though, that's not gonna happen overnight. But the uh, Bank of Canada doing its job with respect to uh, raising interest rates. How will this uh, ultimately, I guess, play into the entire narrative with uh, the budget and housing affordability? That, that makes some people a bit nervous uh, because uh, you know, the political class will feel a, an impulse to respond to that uh, affordability crisis. And I think it has probably reached a crisis level across the country. Um, when politicians have responded in the past, they've tended to do so on the demand side. And of course, the demand side is just adds more fuel to the fire. So uh, I really hope that uh, we've learned our lessons that these sort of uh, these 
tax breaks and what have you uh, meant to uh, meant to at least make us feel like housing is going to be more affordable in the short term just to end up making the situation worse. So I, I, I sense that the, the federal government is, is keen to that. They understand this. You see the, the rumors and the, um, the suggestions in the, in the liberal government's uh, program from the, from the election campaign, for example, are really sort of putting a greater emphasis on supply. That, um, that should help. But again, you can't uh, build hundreds of thousands of houses uh, immediately. Um, so that, I don't know that that's going to make a, a, a big short-term difference. That's really going to have to come from the Bank of Canada by raising interest rates and, and getting the, uh, you know, mortgage rates ultimately a, a little bit higher to, again, take some of that demand pressure off. Let's uh, get into some of the other priorities in the budget. Uh, innovation, uh, carbon, this protectionist notion of uh, made in Canada. Indeed, yeah, that's, a, that's another impulse. Um, again, there'd be a lot of people out there that uh, would caution the government from going too far down that road. Uh, lots of opportunity to, to mess up the economy by you know, a, a dab of a tax break here or another dab of a, of a surplus or a, you know, a, a surplus. <laughs> We're not going to see a surplus for a while, obviously, Larissa, but, uh, but, you know, some, some subsidy programs um, here and there to, uh, to boost various industries. Um, but you, you can see, certainly we saw it again uh, uh, recently with the announcement by Ontario and federal government and putting some money into the into GM or, or giving some incentive to GM to uh, to ramp up its production of uh, electric vehicles in Canada, you're going to see things like that. You're going to see some efforts to to sort of bolster and boost that uh, that supply chain from from ground to to factory floor, and I suppose even to the uh, even to the retail level to to get. Uh, you know, incentives to to start uh, getting the, the the minerals that we need to build the the batteries needed for the the electric vehicles. We have that in Canada. We don't have the capacity to to mine those minerals to the extent that we need at this point. So I'm sure you'll see some uh, some stimulus around uh, around that to get that going, um, and then all the way along the chain. But um, but for sure, you, you definitely see all the signals that there is a there's an impulse out there to uh, to build up the supply chains, make Canada and many its, its allies, North America in particular, less reliant on uh, on sourcing these sorts of things from Asia and other places. Uh, just before we let you go, you had somewhat touched on this, the deficit. Yeah, indeed. It, um, it's almost, uh, given all this going on in the world, we've, we've, we've stopped uh, talking about it almost. I mean, it's big. Um, I guess I personally think that probably a little more emphasis put on it than than perhaps necessary. Um, but uh, but again, that uh, that argument is getting hard to make. The reason it's getting hard to make is because interest rates, of course, are are starting to to rise, and we can't be certain on just how high the central banks are going to put push interest rates to get a get a handle on the inflation that we see going on. Uh, best case scenario, we should be okay, but um, but you need to to plan for more than the best case, obviously. And so, of course, that matters, Larissa, because the reason we've been able to afford all this spending is because interest rates have been so, so low. Um, that era would appear to be over, uh, which means we need to take more seriously the possibility that uh, the, the cost of servicing the, the debt um, is, is on the rise. And so we need to think more carefully about how much we're going to spend um, in, uh, in concert with, uh, with trying to manage the, the, the deficit and the debt at the same time.